What's going on, people? We are Tottenham TV back here again for some more content for you guys today. And what we're going to be looking at is the player contract situation. We're going to be looking at every player running into 18 months left on their contract. So we've got four players on six, six months to go and many more on 18 months left to go. And we're going to have a discussion on each and every player and see if they should be getting contracts. But I think we can kind of just breeze past these six months players because I don't They're think any of them. <laughs> none of them are getting contract Perisic obviously has done his ACL he we we won't be seeing him again and there's rumors of him going to Hadrick split and and everything like that Hugo Lloris obviously is far down the pecking order he won't be getting a contract Eric Dyer, I think we all uh, know what's going on with Eric Dyer and Brandon Austin I mean as a youth keeper goalkeeper still already like 24 25 years of age you never know with that though <laughs> how many times who was it we kept off was it Carter Vickers we just kept offering yeah. the deal every single year we yeah. thought Surely this year is we're just going to let it run out. We kept, but then again, we did end up getting a fee for him, didn't we? At the end, so it was probably good. But you never know with the with youth keepers. But he needs him. He just needs it. Has he, he needs a loan move? Where's he been? He went to Millwall once, did he? Brandon Austin. I don't even know where he's been. Has he, I mean, has he been out on loan at all? He's been like the closest he's got to the first team is like the second goalkeeper on the bench. Right, but then again, if you look at, I'm not, not to say he's ever going to be as good as Vicario, but Vicario never became like a number one for like a for like a top t for a team in the first division until <laughs> a couple of years ago. He's been on loan at Viborg um, in Denmark and Orlando City in America. Okay, so oh, who was I thinking of? Some, we had a keeper on loan at Mill once, it wasn't him. No. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, I, I envisage probably not going to, but you never know, probably not going to sign him on though. In terms of getting rid of those players and replacing them, who do you think needs to be replaced? I mean, obviously a backup keeper. We've got Fraser Forster, but we need a third choice. Maybe one from the youth, Josh Keeley or something, steps up as the third yeah, choice, something like that. Something like that. Um, Could get a, uh, you know, get someone to do the Scott Carson, Rob Green role. We've got Fraser Forster. He's a backup. <laughs> That's not even the, you know, the Stuart Taylor. Maybe we need someone, maybe Fraser Forster takes that role and we sign a better one yeah. as a backup. That would probably be the best situation. Yeah. Um, Perisic, do we need a replacement for Perisic? Uh yes probably because you gotta remember he was um really being used before his injury mm. uh, and then solomon's been injured as well um so i probably would say we need another winger if, if paris is leaving because yeah. i think we already need we already need one on the left probably yeah. so i would say yeah we probably do need one and Eric Dyer, we obviously we need a yeah. centre back. Uh, that's that's just obvious. But in terms of the players with eighteen months left, let's go there by player by player. We'll start with Tangi and Don Bele. Sim, I'll let you take this one away. Yeah, get him, give him a new deal. <laughs> lifetime contract, right? Lifetime, uh, lifetime supply of McDonald's. Um, yeah, I, I'll be interested. Not interested because I, you know, I'm bored of Don Bele now at this point. Finally. No, I'm just bored of the whole thing. I'm bored of the whole saga. It's just boring. He goes to a club. He, uh, you know, did you hear what a pundit said about him uh, yeah, about in Turkey? Chocolates he said he, they've got Galatasaray player who just sits on the bench, eats chocolate, and doesn't play any football. <laughs> um, that's what he, that's what he said about Dombele. So I guarantee you, it's going to come round to this summer, and you're going to be like, one last chance. <laughs> I look again. As I say, he was going to start that preseason game and then he got injured so who knows what would have happened if you would have played but i'm i'm i kind of i can picture it i'm done with the whole saga i would rather just uh cut ties with it at this point because he can't even get to the galatasaray team he's been a massive waste of talent he doesn't seem to care at this point so i i, I don't know what we'll do i don't know if we'll end up ripping up his contract or not but if he ain't going to be part of the spurs team that's for sure and if a loan spell to turkey doesn't work like where else can he go? Saudi? 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 Does he even get a Saudi move though? I don't probably not. I don't think he gets the mo any sort of money there. I don't know. I don't know what uh, his career lies in store for him in, for, the, for the foreseeable because I think he's he's burnt all his bridges at this point, and mm. I don't think anyone's gonna like. Yeah, Turkey was like one of his last opportunities to like just show he's got something about him, show he still at least wants a career. And and try and put himself such an integral part of the Napoli Scudetto winning try, team. No, but try and put himself in the shop window. Look, whatever you want to say about his time in Napoli, he, they used him a lot. They used him off the bench a number. That's what like, I'm saying. He was times. such an integral part to that title I'm winning saying, side. You're saying it sarcastically. I'm <laughs> saying he came off. They used him a lot. He came off the bench nearly every game. Mm. So they didn't not use him. I'm just saying, 
in Turkey was a rule was last chance to, to show like he's got a, he wants to fight for his career he, he won't put himself in the shop window and he's gone to Turkey and he's not even getting a game pretty, yeah. pretty much so I think people will be looking at that thinking we can't it's not worth the risk all right, so Tangi is Tangi. He ain't, he ain't getting a contract. Hopefully, we can get rid of him before the end of that contract. It's massive wages. When you look at it, Perisic, Loris, Dyer, and Tangi and Dombele are probably our four biggest earners at the club. Mm -hmm. uh, Bach, Young, and Son. Yeah, it'll be good to get the wage of the book. Although, what, I, what if we say get the wage of the books? Tangi getting um, cancelling Tangi's contract would involve a payoff, so it doesn't really get the wage of the book. Yeah, really. but you know, um, having said that, he does only have um, in the summer he'll have a year left on his contract. So I'm saying you're not saving any money by paying off. No, you're not saving any money, but at least you're getting it off the books. You know what I mean? But it's the same thing. But yeah, it is the same thing. But you're still getting it off the book, so it's just clear. You're clear of your mind. Yeah, I guess it's just a, yeah, exactly. Peace no, of mind. Don't probably have to deal with it anymore. Yeah. Um, so next one is obviously Hyung Min Son. I do believe he's got a year extension um, applied to that contract as well. So it's not a pressing issue, but I imagine we want we do want to get something sorted with Sonny. Yeah, there's a lot of talk, isn't there? There's been a lot of talk since the beginning of the season about a new contract for him, especially because he's been given the captaincy. I do believe um, after Loris or even level with Loris, he's now our highest earner. Um, probably a level with Ndombele, which is ridiculous. Um so I do, I, I do, I do think now he's got given the captaincy a bit more responsibility. He should be getting a new contract, and I, want, I would like to see a nice three-year deal. You know, really give our trust in him and um, show that we see him, even though he's you know wrong side of thirty, we still see him as a big part of our immediate future. And so, yeah, I would like to see Son uh, given a new deal. For sure. I'm looking at the wages in the squad. Undombele is actually the highest earner at this club, at um, ten and a half million a year sonny's on uh 9.8 million a year mm. which is actually a disgrace <laughs> with yeah. the efforts that those two put in uh to this football club does that mean son got a new contract two years ago and it was still less than Ndombele? yeah he's on 190 ba uh, weekly salary yeah it should be more it should be at least 200 it should be 250 mm. I, I imagine for the last you know three years of his um his next contract will be around that, I reckon, yeah, especially when be. you're getting all these big wage earners off the books. And he's your captain uh, now. And he's your captain. He's the talisman. He's the he's the man to go to. So Sonny deserves it if, if no one else mm -hmm. does. So Sonny has to get that contract, albeit he does have um, a clause in his contract where we can trigger a year extension. Um, next up is Pierre Amohoibier. I think, um, I don't think he gets a contract, to be honest. I think we either sell him in this January or this coming um, summer. Yeah, I agree. I think we send. Although you never know what the future holds in football. There are players who you write off and then all of a sudden they come back into the fold and they become one of your more important players. And Hoybier, you know, you never know uh, how, how important he might turn out to be in the future. As of right now, though, just from what I've seen of him in Ange's system so far, he doesn't seem to be really up to it. I don't think he's been horrific or terrible or just like uh, a liability or anything, but he's just not of the required standard. He doesn't think quickly enough. He doesn't make quick enough decisions on the ball. And I think Ange knows that, which is why uh, there was even one game where we had a lot of injuries, yet he still chose Lo Celso and Kulu over him in central midfield. Because I think he knows that when push comes to shove, when you really want that ability in midfield, Hoybier just doesn't quite have it. Not to say he's a bad player. So I do think we're going to look to sell him. We did try to sell him last summer, so it's no surprise. I do think we're going to try and sell him again. I do, I, if I'm going to predict, I would predict he probably doesn't leave in January, probably stays to the end of the season, and then we let him go in, um, in, in the summer. However, if we do get a really good offer in January, which, we're, which is probably the last, you know, chance to get a, a well, look, I wouldn't say the last chance to get a fee, but probably the best chance to get the best fee would be in January. Then I wouldn't be surprised if we do get a good offer, he will leave and we're, maybe we'll have someone lined up to replace him. But if I, I reckon it's more unlikely, it's more likely he'll leave in the summer, probably, I would say. I agree with that. Um, but having said that, if he, uh, if he is going to leave in January, first of all, we need to get someone in beforehand. And if not, we can't let him go until like the very end of the window, just yeah. because of the AFCON. Like we're just so short on numbers in midfield. Mm. Um, he's actually going to be so vital to us in January, isn't he? Yeah. For those games. To, yeah, no Basuma, no Sar. We're going to need him to step up. And when you're looking at it, he's another one of the top earners at the club on a hundred grand a week. So has he, has he ever got re-signed a contract in the coming? No, probably I'm not. not. Sure, I don't think so. To be honest, no, because he signed in 2020. Mm. So what are we in 20? Yeah, probably a f 
five year deal. That makes sense. I don't remember him ever signing a deal anyway. Yeah. So Hoy Bier looks like his um, time at Spurs is probably coming to an end as well. And I, I like Pierre, model professional, always given his all for the club. I just feel like the club has moved on in terms of the playing style. And he was a great fit for the previous systems and everything like that. But under Ange Ball, un unfortunately, he's just not the right fit. Uh, mm -hmm. That's just what it comes down to. Ben Davis is... It is an interesting one. I mean, he's 30 years old right now, 31 in April. That means he'll be 32 by the time the contract's up. So what do you do with Ben Davis? Sure, I, I don't know if we offer him a new deal at 32 years of age. It really depends. I, I wouldn't be surprised if we did because he's actually playing quite well and he's a, uh, you know, maybe we see him as a reliable backup for left back and fourth choice, fourth choice centre back or backup left back. And maybe we see him as that in a perfect world, in my opinion, I think you let him see out the 18 months. I don't think you sell him unless it's like a good fee. I don't think you sell him. You might as well keep him around, but then you let him run down his contract and what you say, 32, you probably let him leave after what, over 10 years of service to Spurs mm. and you, you give him, and that's, you know, it's unbelievable a player like Ben Davis was here for being here for 10 years. Yeah. Um, but let's say in the next, let's say in the next uh, 18 months, he plays like he's playing now and he doesn't seem to be dropping his performance level. It probably is worth just keeping him around, I guess. There, there's no harm in no harm in giving him another couple or year or two extension. But if his mm. performance... Ben are, Davis till he's 35 exactly. years old. But maybe if... <laughs> But look, I think it's important sometimes uh, when a player's been here that long, you show a bit of loyalty if, he, if he's still got something to offer. But if his performance is starting to, to decline, I think in a perfect world for me, I don't give him a contract and I just let him see out. I'm just looking from the club's point of view. Like, would they rather spend money on trying to replace him or just, or if he's actually still got something to offer, would they just offer him a new deal? Like, he's playing like he is now. Would they rather go spend like 15 20 30 million on trying to replace him or just give him another 18 month deal or, or, or two year deal spend money on replacing him because when you're when you're looking at the squad now we're already saying regardless if he if he stays or goes we need to sign another left back right mm -hmm. so that's destiny Adogi and another another left back at, at the left back situation you're looking at the center back situations we're already saying that we need one or two center backs already we've got players like ashley phillips alfie dorrington um the lad from croatia um coming through he's 16 yeah i know he's 16 but the other ones are 18 mm. um and he's already saying dorrington could be getting chances so i just think it's going to be one more year of ben davis i don't think we offer him a new contract at that age if he was a couple of years younger i, w I would have said that maybe there's a chance but at this age, with the players coming through and with um, the players that we're looking to buy, I just don't see there's room for him uh, past his contract. I would agree. And I think in a perfect world, I agree. I just think the club might be might might be tempted to give him another one more extension if he's still off playing at the same level as he's playing currently. Like, and he's doing a really good job. I, I'm, I have to give him credit. Yeah. And I think if he if he's consistently playing at that level whenever he's called upon... I think the club would be tempted to give him another deal. That's all That's all I would say. Mm -hmm. I think in a perfect world, and even right now, I would say just let him see out the 18 months and then try and upgrade. That's mm -hmm. what I would do. Yeah, and I think that's that's what will be the situation. But in terms of looking at all these players, we're saying the majority of them need to go. Um, you know, a few of them are 50-50s, but more or less the only one that's staying on there is Hyung Min Son and potentially maybe Ben Davis. Yeah, may, and I think may, there's an outside chance of Lascel, so I would say. Um, again, a year, uh, a six months or a year is a long time in football. I don't know what the situation. Maybe you know Madison gets another injury and Lacelso just comes in and smashes it and plays every game and it's amazing. Who knows? But I would say the outside chance of Lacelso. Other than that, I do find it unlikely. Uh, anyone else apart from maybe Sesson, you know, I would say. Mm. I think Sesson has got an outside chance as well. So in terms of incomings to um, to combat these all these players going out. What do we need? Left winger, left back, centre back, centre mid, and centre mid. Mm -hmm. A lot. Um, it is a lot, mm -hmm. but when you're looking at it, uh, come the end of that summer in 18 months' time, we're going to have a completely new squad. Completely. No, we're going to have apart from Hyung Min Son, none of the old guard are still going to be here. Everyone's going to be changed, even from like the Jose era. I'm mm -hmm. trying to think of like who was in that the Jose yeah. team. It would be completely like completely switched up from, from then.
which means that the uh, the painful rebuild is probably in the latter stages or will be in the latter stage. Uh, maybe it'll be Let's complete by so. then. It's only taken <laughs> half a decade. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. But look, those are the players with uh, six to 18 months left on the contract. Let me know in the comment section below, do you agree about the players that we've said to keep or to not to keep uh, or to give the contract? Let us know in the comment section below. But that is your contract video. Like, subscribe and comment. And as always, come on you Spurs. Yeah.